You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. The militia movement has no racial overtones and does not espouse bigotry. There are some black and Jewish militia members. While many militia members are not law violators, the presence of Christian identity followers and individuals who embrace other hate beliefs is an emerging problem. 43 militia groups vary in some of their beliefs and priorities, but the preservation of their right to possess and own firearms is universally regarded as the most important issue. Militias view firearms ownership as a means to safeguard against government totalitarianism. Many militia members view, as fact, conspiracy theories based on scenarios where the federal government increases its power gradually and confiscates firearms. Some members believe New World Order conspiracy theories that foreign troops are secretly stationed in the country or staged for an imminent invasion sanctioned by the United Nations. 44 Timothy McVeigh was not raised on a farm, but his anti-government sentiments could have been partially formed by the disappearance of industrial jobs commonly available to his father's generation. Many of these jobs were lost due to international trade agreements and global economics. 45 His right-wing beliefs were something McVeigh had in common with militia members and other patriot groups. A significant belief opposed the government regulation of the right to own firearms. According to Lou Mitchell and Dan Urbeck in American Terrorist, Timothy McVeigh and the Oklahoma City bombing, McVeigh belonged to the Ku Klux Klan KKK for one year while serving in the U.S. Army. McVeigh determined the Klan's main emphasis was on racism, while his concern was gun ownership rights and patriotism. 46 McVeigh believed politicians had the power to set their own salaries and were able to lavishly reward themselves in violation of the trust the public placed in them. Following his failure to gain employment as a New York toll road collector, despite a high score on the entrance examination, McVeigh surmised he was not hired because he was white and blamed affirmative action programs. 47 The Ruby Ridge incident further inflamed his anger with the federal government to the point where he believed the United States was becoming an overtaxed police state, concluding that the National Rifle Association was too weak to protect his Second Amendment rights, McVeigh cancelled his membership. 48 In an interview conducted by a student reporter during the Waco siege, McVeigh claimed the local sheriff was the only person with the legal authority to serve the warrant. Federal agents had no authority or legitimate reason to be on Branch Davidian property. McVeigh ultimately found acceptance and understanding among the individuals he associated with while participating in the gun show circuit. He further solidified his belief in a new world order a single ruling government in the form of the United Nations taking over the United States and restricting individual freedom. 49 militias, according to Bruce Hoffman in Inside Terrorism, come into varieties. T talking militias do not advocate the overthrow of the government and are primarily concerned with preserving the right to bear arms. Marching militias, or upfront militias, use force to accomplish their goals. They embrace the more radical anti-Semitic, racist, and subversive principles of the radical right. 50 The Vietier Militia Group in Phoenix, Arizona, is an example of a marching militia, their members amassed a sizable stockpile of illegal weapons and practiced the use of explosives. During the investigation following their arrest, the group's plan to bomb buildings in Phoenix was discovered. 51 Closed Cell B.A. Weisinger, R.I.G.H.D.W.I.N.G.G.R.O.U.P.C.H.A.R.A.C.D.U.R.I.S.T.I.C.Z.H.O.M.E.L.A.N.D.S.E.C.U.R.I.T.E.N.F.A.I.R
due to the arrests of several militia members in the late 1990s and unfulfilled conspiracy theories related to Y2K, many people left militia organizations. Other individuals left militias because they believed the organizations did not sufficiently address the issues important to them. 54 These were more radical members who probably became affiliated with other right-wing extremist groups that fulfilled their expectations. Others become loners, such as accused Olympic Park bomber Eric Rudolph, and committed violent acts to satisfy their desire for action. 55 Many other members grew bored and lost interest in militias. 56 After the September 11, 2001 attacks, Militias adopted new conspiracy theories to fit their fear of a new world order. Conspiracy theories often provide simplistic analysis, defying explanations of conflict or perceived problems. Militia members who embrace these theories have explained to individuals or groups, instead of analyzing the complexities of real-world issues and power structures. 57 John Drockman of the militia of Montana voiced an outlandish conspiracy theory when he claimed Bin Laden was a CIA operative when he masterminded the 9-11 attacks. 58 Post-9-11 interest in survivalist training and equipment has also been used to increase militia membership and activities. Militia members at a fair in Yakima, Washington actively sought individuals to enroll in classes on terrorism survival. The militia of Montana sold biological warfare suits, gas masks, and potassium iodide to individuals in various parts of the United States. 59 Membership in militia organizations has increased and decreased over the past 20 years. Events such as the Oklahoma City bombing and the 9-11 attacks have impacted militia organizations by refocusing their interests. While many militia members are not law violators, the presence of members who have more radical beliefs, such as Christian identity, is a matter of concern. Sovereign citizens, FREMEN, and common law courts people involved in groups referring to themselves as sovereign citizens, freemen, and common law court members are categorized as separatist by Leonard Weinberg, Elizabeth Francis, and Randall Lloyd in their article, Courts Under Threat. In addition to a formative relationship with Christian identity, a manuscript known as the Nehemiah Township Document and Common Law Contract provides the foundation for separatist organizations. In 1982, 28 people signed the document that was subsequently notarized and filed by the county clerk in Kootenay County, Idaho. Notable extremist signatories included Richard Butler and KKK Imperial Wizard Tom Robb. 60 A religiously based Republican government, in which only Aryan Freeman would have rights, was the ultimate goal of the Nehemiah Township Charter. It referred to God's You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste.